Good evening, sir. I'm amazed you made it back to the docks alone. Good for you. Well, I could say the same about you, young man. More to the point, who the hell are you? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. And I am Archer Woodbead. Please excuse my assertiveness. I often forget I'm just an old prune. What can you tell me about this part of town? People used to feel safe around here. They had the gangs protecting them. Now all they do is bicker and plot against one another. Missing the good old days, are you not? Trust me, son. The longer you live, the less meaning your existence will have. You need to remember the days you still had beliefs. And what about the gangs? Back in my day, people trusted the wet boot boys. We looked out for the docks and its families. Nowadays, they're just a bunch of greedy fuckers. You were a gang member? I was their leader for a time, believe it or not. Now these bastards act like a nothing. Not one of them. They owe me some damn respect. If you were such a respected figure, surely you have many interesting stories about this part of town. You bet I do, but make no mistake. I'm no rat, sir. Some secrets are best left buried. Who would you trust around here? The owner of the Turquoise Turtle's a decent fella. Tom's his name. Sean Hampton's all right, too. Don't particularly share his religious views. He's quite devout, if you catch my meaning. Do you still know anyone? From the old days, I mean. Most of them are dead. I still give Miss Gillingham salutations. She doesn't remember me. She did once like me. Boy, <laughs> she was a beauty back then. Any remarkable new faces around here? Nobody. Well, there's that boy Rufus the Curse. I like him, despite the reputation he's made since his parents died. Poor little bastard. I'm sure a district as colorful as the docks must have plenty of stories about strange visitors and creepy characters. So, you want me to talk about the sewer dog, don't you? If you don't mind. The sewer dog is a bitch. Appropriately named, an old woman dressed in rags. She has an elegance, though, despite her ugliness. I saw her once. Scared the life out of me. Have you always been so bitter? It's not bitterness. It's poorly masked disgust. When everything turns to shit, we all have to eat a spoon or two. As a practitioner, I believe science will provide a new standard of welfare. It's just a matter of time. I'd like to believe you, Doctor. But recently all science has been good for is mustard gas and machine guns. But what about social progress? What about women getting the right to vote? Things can change for the better. I've never voted, not once. And my wife, God rest her soul, she was too busy taking care of the kids to vote. Tell me about the wet boot boys, Archer. I want to know more. We were there for the families and each other. It was us against the world. We were vicious, tough, even cruel. But we were united. You sound like you were some kind of radical union member. Yes, nowadays the communists and gangs squabble over pointless territory. Sounds stupid when you say it out loud. Tell me everything you know about the Guard of Prewen. Andrew never told me what they do. I do know they're vigilantes with military training. Access to some impressive firepower. And what is your personal opinion about the Guard, then? This Guard of Prewen is just another gang preying on the young and naive. Preying on people like my boy. I know how it works. I invented it. Why did your son really join the Guard of Prewen? If I believed in a higher power, I'd see this as punishment for my own sins. I deserve it for all the young men I enlisted back in the day. You don't believe in God, though, do you, Mr. Woodbead? So why did he join? Now I think about it. Andrew joined the Guard, not to defy me, but to follow in my footsteps, to make me proud. So your son has left you nothing to explain his actions? No letter or message? Not even a note. I'm a proud man, Dr. Reed. But I would kneel and pray if I thought it would give me my Andrew back. I'm looking for a man named Sean Hampton.
Can you help me? The sad saint. Even when he was young, his faith and dedication were inspiring. A beacon even, if I may say so. Interesting. But have you spoken to him recently? I spoke with him about my missing son a few days ago. I've not seen him since he was attacked by some drunkard and left the vicinity. Goodbye, sir. From Seymour to my beloved mother, Stella. Fishburn, that sneaky bastard. It's locked, all right. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. I have retrieved the gift for your mother, sir. Great. Give it here, then, and take this for your trouble. I also found the corpses. The ones under which you left the necklace, Mr. Fishburne. Ah, so that's where I left it. I can be a bit stupid sometimes. Have you no remorse? You don't even deny your crimes. I have many weaknesses, Dr. Reed, but lying about who I am ain't one of them. You're not a mindless animal, Seymour. Surely you have something to say about these murders. Speak up and I will listen without judgment. Could be right, Dr. Reed. Maybe it'll do some good to confide in a gentleman like you. You being educated and all. Tell me about your victims, Seymour. Who were they? Why them? Was there a link? Why should there be? They just kept getting on my nerves at the worst times, that's all. How many? How many victims? It's not like I keep records. It happens when it happens. You feel nothing, do you? No empathy for your victims at all? You seem pretty calm yourself, don't you? We're not talking about me. That right. Well, our calm's the only thing we have in common then. Did you take pleasure in killing them, Seymour? All those people, all those lives extinguished. I take no pleasure from it. Just gives me peace. Stills the anger. For a time. This rage you feel. Have you ever been able to control it? Resist it? I... I tried. For my mum, I tried for her. Telling the truth made me feel better. For a while. Don't you think you should seek help? Talk to someone you trust, someone who cares about you. No. And don't dare speak about me to your colleagues either. Keep your mouth shut tight, especially about my mum. Why is your mother protecting you, Seymour? I'm her son. She's the only one who knows me. Sometimes I think she knows me better than I know myself. I understand you love her. But can't you see the awful situation you've put her in? Do you think my mum would have a better life if I were dead? She seems so sad to know me sometimes. I understand your mother's situation. Obtaining justice at the price of betraying her own flesh. It's quite a dilemma. It might be my mum's wish that I end up swinging from a hangman's noose. But she wouldn't want to be the one who ties a knot round my neck. Goodbye, Mr Fishburne. Good evening, Mrs. Fishburne. May I come in, please? Of course, Dr. Reed. I'm not sure the epidemic is what worries people most these days. What can I do for you, Dr. Reed? Your son's gone way beyond simply bullying people. He has a taste for blood, and you know it, don't you, Stella? One night. He told me straight up, in his own words. It was several days after one of his episodes. Why did he confess? Did you suspect something? No. I guess he wanted his old mum to help him fight his, uh, demons. Did Seymour tell you everything that night? 
more than I could stand. The words he used to describe his hate, his rage, how he feels when he's done it. Stella, I know you are ashamed of your son's crimes. So why do you protect Seymour? I can't report my own son, can I? Not a burden I could bear. Burden? How do you mean? They'd hang him for sure. I won't send my only son to his death. I'm convinced you raised Seymour the best you could. You're not responsible for what he became. If someone ever found the courage to speak to the police, I will take my share. Tell me about these demons Seymour needs your help to fight. Seymour used to be such a happy child. And he is still a helping son most of the time. But when he gets angry, he can hardly contain his rage. All men and women are born innocent, Mrs. Fishburne. But there can be a monster within any of us. Do you think he can be cured, Doctor? Do you think something can extinguish this rage inside my Seymour? Science has only just begun to investigate the mysteries of the human mind. Currently, we have more assumptions than fact. There ain't no hope, then. Somehow, somewhere, my son has turned into a monster, and nothing will bring him back. Goodbye, Miss Fishburne. Take care of yourself. <laughs>